Andrew Mitchell, we'll begin with you. Uh, you had a great big interview with Secretary of State Antony Blinken earlier. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about his observations about uh, the tone and content of the president's trip overseas. And I'm just reminded, because we are just getting a push alert as well, though, I want to very quickly, if I can, ask you about what we're knowing came out of Israel, uh, specifically inside the Knesset, that vote that Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has been officially removed from power. This uh, to be replaced by Naftali Bennett, a right-wing lawmaker. Talk about what you know about that and the expectations therein. Well, let me start there with the breaking news, because I was just there two weeks ago uh, before Brussels and and uh, the UK and before I was in Turkey, the week before that I was in Israel covering Secretary Blinken's trip there. And so I've been in touch and talking to people here as well about this. And uh, look, the, the Naftali Bennett is in a, a very unusual coalition to say the least. This is a coalition of Naftali Bennett, very conservative, very religious, more right wing they say than Netanyahu, who has aligned himself with Lapid, Yair Lapid, who is a centrist, a centrist right, but Lapid had more votes, but he needed Bennett's votes to form that coalition to get the 61 votes that they needed minimum to have a majority to oust Netanyahu after 12 years. I've covered Netanyahu for years before he was prime minister and in his previous term as prime minister because there were a couple of years in between. And he had been in recent years a really divisive figure. They've had uh, you know, four elections in the last two years, they couldn't reach a majority, and he tried desperately to keep on, but finally, uh, after calling it, you know, a fake election and using a lot of the Trumpian terms, he did uh, have to concede. He didn't have the votes. And it's a very fragile coalition. He can, as an opposition backbencher, challenge uh, the ex new coalition, which is going to be led by Bennett, even though he had so few votes, but he was the critical glue that is holding it together. And he will be prime minister for two years and then we'll turn it over to Lapid for the next two years, who has more popularity throughout mm -hmm. the, the Israeli public. Uh, it's believed that because they are so unlike in terms of their view of a Palestinian state and whether the Palestinians should have any autonomy, that there will be no, uh, no national political uh, diplomatic decisions made in terms of returning to the two-state solution or all of the things that Netanyahu backed away from with the support of Donald Trump, mm -hmm. which was 70 years of bipartisan American policy and UN resolutions. So they will not resolve the Palestinian issues. But interestingly, this new coalition actually has some Arab-Israeli members. So it is a, a very mixed group. And it's going to be very hard for them to stick together. There have also been warnings, public warnings from Shin Bet, their domestic security organization, that there have been uh, terrible right-wing threats against the lives of the two coalition leaders, mm. uh, Bennett and now, uh, of course, Lapid is going to become the foreign minister. And they're going to share duties in the coming years, but focus mostly on domestic issues, the economy, the pandemic, and all of the other challenges to Israel.